everyone. Happy Black History Month from the National Museum of African American History and Culture. My name is Ariel and I am so happy we will be learning together today. This month we are celebrating and learning from Black nature lovers and explorers. We are going to start our program by talking with and learning from a special guest and then we'll do a little art project inspired by something we learn. If you are ready, give me a thumbs up or two. We are celebrating somebody today. Let's see who. In our world, there are so many beautiful and amazing things to discover, to explore, to learn more about, from big things like trees and mountains and oceans and elephants, to small things like flowers and birds and rocks and insects, the world is an amazing place. Today, we are going to meet a special guest who explores our planet through climbing. Let's meet climber Brittany Leppett. Hi, Brittany. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you all for having me. Friends, um, Brittany is a rock climber and the CEO of an organization called Brown Girls Climb. She loves teaching all kinds of people of all different ages about the outdoors and exploring it in different ways. Brittany, welcome to Learning Together. Thank you. We are really excited to meet you and learn from you as well. Would it be okay if we ask you some questions? Oh, yes. I would love some questions. Awesome. So friends, I'm going to ask Brittany just a few questions first. And as we learn from her today, you may have more questions or things you're curious about. So make sure you send those questions to us in the chat and I will read them for Brittany a little bit later. All right, let's get started. <laughs> um, what do you love about climbing? Tell us what's so great about it. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's just so many really great things about climbing. Um, one thing that I really love to share to folks about climbing is that it's a way to get connected to nature um, by seeing. So being able to see the different rock types um, to the mountains, the trees, the animals that you get to see along the way to also what's really cool is the physical touch and feel of the rock. Not every rock feels the same across the country and the world. And so being able to get the experience of climbing on it is really cool. And also sometimes you might get to climb on really cool things like snow and ice. Um, I also love climbing in the sense of, I like to climb with people, but I also like to climb alone. And what's really cool about climbing by myself, it helps me build um, my own self-confidence. I also get to work on my physical self. But I also love climbing with folks because it's a way for me just to get connected within community, but also it's a really great way to learn how to build trust and teamwork with folks and working with and working and also climbing with all different very styles and experiences of climbers. It sounds like in climbing, you'll have to learn to trust and believe in yourself, but also trust other people and, and kind of get to do both of those things when you're climbing. Um, and it also sounds like there's a lot of different kinds of climbing. So not just maybe what we think of, but a few different kinds as well. Could you tell us about um, a few different kinds of climbing and maybe if there, if you have a favorite, which one? For sure, yeah. There are just so many different types of climbing. And so I'll share just a few today. One known style of climbing is climbing a tree. Um, this is a really fun, great exercise to do, and oftentimes it's a little bit more accessible um, if you have a tree in your park or in your backyard. Also noting that climbing is a physical activity, so safety-wise, it's always good to have a family member, caregiver, or friend by you. Um, and also noting that some of the climbing styles, may um, you might have to have additional gear to go along with it. Um, another style of climbing that I really enjoy is called rock wall climbing. And this is what you may see quite often if you ever have walked by a park or even going into a climbing gym. And this is where folks are, are extending or going up the wall using gear or a rope, maybe wearing a harness or a helmet um, and having someone else help them support getting up. Another style of climbing is you don't have ropes at all and it's called bouldering. And it's another way of 
problem solving on the wall. And instead of having a rope to get to the top, you actually have pads to lay down around the rock. So if you do fall off, you fall off safely on pads and also the support of friends. Um, some really, really um, cold styles of climbing um, is ice climbing, which is oftentimes you're climbing on a frozen waterfall. And so normally this happens during the winter time or in areas where it gets cold pretty much all year around. And then another combination of climbing, it's called mountaineering. And that's a little bit of a mixture of climbing and hiking put together. And you're often climbing something super, super high, where you're in the mixture of climbing on rocks, maybe a little bit of snow, some ice, and you're also doing it in a way where you're working together as a team because there's additional gear that you'll often have to use for that. So there are like a lot of different ways that you can climb. Um, and it sounds like with all of the ways though, it's always important to have somebody with you and to be using the right um, gear so that we're safe when we're having so much fun. So um, we can use climbing to explore a lot of different environments and parts of nature from trees to boulders to ice. Um, I think that's just so cool. Um, of course, a lot of us, when we think about climbing, we think about mountains. Um, and luckily our planet has a lot of those, including a really, really, really big one um, called Mount Kilimanjaro. And one of the really amazing things about Brittany friends is that she was a part of the first African-American team to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, so can you tell us about the mountain and what that experience was like and how did climbing together um, as a team make a difference? Yeah. So I want to first locate where Mount Kilimanjaro is. Mount Kilimanjaro is in the country of Tanzania, which is in the continent of Africa. Um, specifically East Africa. And it's one of the highest peaks in Africa. It stands over 19,000 um, feet above sea level, which is really, really, really tall. And what's really beautiful about the mountain is that there's four different ways that you can actually go up the, the mountain way. And also noting, you can't just do it in one day. It takes about five to nine days to do so. Um, what's really cool that as you're hiking up this mountain, you get to experience different ecosystems you start out in a rainforest, and then you start hiking into the alpine meadows, and then an Arctic-like landscape where oftentimes you can see glaciers right above, and it's just a really cool experience to have. Um, noting that you can't climb this mountain by yourself, you actually have to hire what's called a guide, um, and in Africa they're called porters. And these are the folks that will not only help your full team, um, but they'll help you with the navigation of the mountain because you still do need a map. They'll also help you if um, making food. They'll also help you with if you get what's called altitude sickness, which oftentimes our body doesn't like getting super high. And so they're there to support you and sometimes helping you back down the mountain. Um, noting that um, this was, Let's see, there were some challenges. A big challenge is, as I mentioned, is getting sick on the mountain called altitude sickness. Uh, oftentimes might happen even here in the States if you ever go to Colorado. It's where your body just feels really dizzy and not used to the change. So a big thing that you do before going on this mountain is you prep. So oftentimes prep means that you're doing a lot of hiking, maybe doing some running, and then you're also prepping yourself of learning the type of gear that you'll need to make sure that you stay nice and warm um, on the mountaintop. Whoa, I think that what it sounds like is like you're preparing your body and your mind in a lot of different ways um, to do something that like intense and that like long of a trip. And you said that it takes somewhere between five to nine days. How long did it take your team to to climb? We took seven days to climb. So we would climb up the mountain, and then what you do when you get to a camp is you hike down, so that way you can sleep a little bit better, and then you hike up again, so your body gets used to the changing of um, the air. Okay, so yeah, you're definitely sleeping, <laughs> and then you start again the next day, and then you sleep and start again. Okay, <laughs> so not just seven days straight of climbing, friends. You have to make sure you're resting and taking good care of your body. <laughs> So your organization, um, Brown Girls Climb, um, 
inspires people to explore the world through climbing. Um, and so I was wondering if you could tell our audience today um, why they might want to give climbing a try and how they could get started just in their own way, in their own neighborhood. Yeah, climbing it has so many really great benefits. Not only is it a physical um, benefit, it's also really helpful um, to help support problem um, problem solving skills. It also helps you boost confidence. Um, a big thing, it helps overcoming fear, especially climbing big heights. A fun fact, a lot of climbers are actually afraid of heights and that's often why they get into climbing, which is pretty interesting, but I also think it's really cool. Um, and it's also a really great way to become social and meet other friends and other caregivers. And it's also another way to enjoy the beauty of climbing outside. You can also climb indoors in a gym, but you can also climb outside in a tree or a rock. And then this is also a great way just in general for caregivers and families to bond over another activity to do. Um, and noting that uh, for folks who are interested in getting climbing, there's what's called a guiding companies, depending on wherever you live. You can have someone take you outside and they'll give you all the details of how you can climb. And so this is something you can do um, together as a family. Or if you're someone who wants to work on this by yourself, but you kind of want to build a team, a lot of climbing gyms have what's called a youth program where you can learn all the skills um, and confidence of getting into climbing. Um, does your organization also work with young children or or um, young girls um, or just for grownups? Some friends are already asking some questions about that. Yeah, yeah, that's a really great question. Um, our organization, we work with all ages. So not only do we work with folks at a younger age, but we also, um, all of our events are open to all. So your family can come to one of our meetups that we have in the gym or if we're doing an outdoor event and you wanna have that experience of climbing outside within community, we always welcome everyone. Um, we also note that if you are younger, that you will always have to have a guardian with you, but we welcome all ages. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I wanna give our friends uh, who are watching today a chance to learn more um, about you, about climbing, um, by asking you some questions that they have. So friends, um, I've already seen some questions come into the chat, so thank you for that. Um, but if you have any more, you can um, add those. Um, and let's get started with some questions. Um, so one question actually was about Mount, actually we have a couple more questions about, about when you climbed um, Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, did it also take you the same amount of time to go back down the mountain is one of the questions. And then also, what kinds of animals, if you saw any when you were climbing Mount Kilimanjaro? Oh, yeah, these are really great questions. Um, so the first one, um, we it only took us maybe two days to actually hike back down the mountain because we were going back down closer to sea level. So our bodies were able to hike a little bit faster. Um, but along the way, as we were hiking back down and getting back into the rainforest, we did get to see a lot of monkeys in the tree, which was really cool. And we also saw a lot of big birds when, when we were in the alpine area. So there are um, wildlife that does live on this mountain. Um, on other routes, which we didn't get to see, but elephants do roam around um, the mountain of Kilimanjaro, which is also really cool. We got to see elephants on a safari, but none on the mountain. I would have loved to see the birds and monkeys. That is so cool. And it's pretty interesting how it would take less time to go um, down. So that's that was a really great question, friends. Um, okay, let's see what other questions. Okay, we have some questions about falling or getting hurt. Um, have you fallen or gotten hurt before during rock climbing? And how do you maybe kind of come back from that? Yeah, that's a really, really great question. So oftentimes in climbing, that's also part of it, you fall. And sometimes that can feel scary, especially uh, I'll stick with bouldering. Oftentimes when you're problem solving, you might not be able to make a move and you might fall off while doing so. But that's what's the great part about it. It's working on um, taking the time to learn to make that move, what we call projecting. So you may not finish the climb fully, you may have to piece it out in certain chunks. Um, falling can definitely still be scary, but a big note with bouldering is like having pads, but then also having what we call spotters or your friends supporting you to making sure like when you do fall, you fall with guidance. Um, you can also still 
fall on ropes as well. Um, and you learn how your blayer, who's the person who has the harness on, they catch you so that way you don't fall to the ground. Um, so it is part of the act of climbing, but you also learn the ways of, it can feel a little nerve wracking at first, but then it also helps boost the confidence of that you're able to hop back on the wall. Um, have I been injured from falling before? I've hurt my fingers <laughs> and that happens as well. It's um, no matter what you might hurt finger, uh, fingers or ankles, but you know, a big thing is taking that notoriety that climbing is a little bit of a risky sport. And so that's why we always wanna take our time while working on climbs and or problems. Thank you, Brittany. It sounds like um, you're gonna make some mistakes, especially when you're first learning how to climb and that it's okay to make mistakes. And it's especially, um, it's not only a way for learning like about yourself and learning how to solve problems, but then it's like learning to connect and trust your friends or the people with you and they can help you when you make mistakes. Um, okay, we have some more questions. Um, we have a, one school is wondering, um, let me go to that question. We have a school that is wondering, when did you start climbing? Um, and do you prefer to climb alone or in a group? Good question. So I started climbing 13 years ago, <laughs> a very, very, very long time ago. And I actually started climbing because my friends got me into the sport, which is also really cool. Um, and so that kind of like leans into the other um, question is that I love climbing in groups. I love climbing with my friends. I love climbing with newer folks or bringing folks out to climbing. Um, but I also love finding that space for myself and climbing alone. And so often um, if I'm training, I tend to will train by myself or if I need a day just by myself, I will go to the gym in Boulder alone. So it's a good balance of climbing with folks, but I also like to have some of my alone time as well. Awesome, thank you. Um, why or and how did you kind of start um, or I guess why does something like Round Girls Climb exist? Um, what is the benefit of your organization to the climbing community? Yeah, that's a really great question. <laughs> um, so Brown Girls Climb was created because a lot of the folks who started this organization didn't see the representation of themselves in this sport. Um, though climbing has been around for a very, very long time, and it's something that is done all over the world, um, here we were noticing that we weren't seeing many uh, black or indigenous climbers, whether it's climbing in the gyms or being guides. And so we created a space where we could research and story tell other folks who are doing it, but then also creating a space for folks who want to be part of the community to be seen and heard. And so it started out as just like a small Instagram um, and now has blossomed into a big national organization um, that has been going on for seven years. And yeah, it's something that we continue to recognize that it's important to continue so telling our community stories and um, creating that um, space for our representation. Yeah, it's a way to make sure that everyone can get involved in something so cool and something so important um, and to like our personal growth and learning. Um, we have some questions about like equipment and things. You mentioned that we put on helmets to keep our heads safe maybe a harness. Um, someone was wondering, is there anything you do to put on your hands? Um, and is there anything that maybe extra tips for staying safe? Yeah, so if I'm doing a cold climb sport, like maybe mountaineering, I will wear big mittens to keep my hands nice and warm because I'm often uh, hiking, in a very cold place, maybe it's nine degrees and there's a lot of wind and I wanna make sure I'm covering all my body to keep all my warmth in. Um, some folks, when they are belaying, they might use belay gloves because the rope might hurt their hands. Um, but oftentimes when you're climbing on the rock, you wanna make sure that you have the hand, um, bare hands. Maybe you, you might get sweaty hands. So people will use chalk to make sure their hands aren't as sweaty. So that way they can have better grip on the wall. Um, but yeah, those are kind of like three key things um, when it comes to wearing um, stuff on your hands. And then what was the other question? Any other tips for staying safe? Um, oh, yeah. 
it's always good to when you especially going outside is understanding that you have so much elements you have the weather you have other people you have rocks um so making sure that you are going outside with folks who understand communication communication is a key way to making sure that everyone stays safe um also noting gear is always important but a key thing is making sure that you're with people who um, have the right education and then also making sure that as a group, when you're going group climbing, even in a gym, that you have communication. And there's also what we call climbing lingo or a language that we use with one another when we're about to climb on a wall and or working on a project. Cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it sounds like being able to talk to people and work with people is like a really big part of climbing. Um, someone was wondering, does anyone in your family um climb and um how do they feel about you climbing do they get frightened or worried about you at all <laughs> so that's a really great question i'm the only one that climbs in my family um okay. and yeah i think that's a natural thing that sometimes if it's not an activity that a family member or a friend is um, is used to there could be that fear of oh you're going to a remote place or you're going to be on top of a mountain and so oftentimes that is a thing, but we always have our safety protocols. I always check in before I go on a big mountain trip or I'm gonna go out climbing. So they know what's happening. And if anything does happen, they know where I am. I think that's a really good idea is letting your family know where you are and that you're okay. And maybe you send them some good pictures and they can maybe worry a little bit less, but yeah, that's a part of caring about people is we wanna make sure they're safe. Um, okay, we just have a couple more minutes, so I'm just going to ask a couple more questions. We have a bunch of questions about um, animals. Have you seen any really cool animals during your climbs? And also, are pets allowed to come on climbs? Oh, really good question. So I have seen animals big from, if I'm in Colorado, mountain goats climbing, which is really cool, or marmots um, to like the smallest crit critters of um skinks, which are like little like um, salamander critters, to butterflies. Um, I have seen deer. Um, I've been hiking on a crag where there has been a bear. Um, so you kind of, depending on where you are, you get to see a lot of cool different animals from like the really big ones to like the really small ones. And then also, what was the second part of the question? <laughs> are pets allowed to come climbing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a really great question. And another question, um, yes, pets are allowed to come. Oftentimes, you, if you're at the crag, you might see a crag, what we call a crag dog, and sometimes even a crag cat, which is a cat on a leash that just hangs out. Um, but folks will, will bring their um, animals. And then sometimes their animals, they might not be used to being at the crag. So it might be a little overwhelming because there's a lot going on, people talking, there's food everywhere. So they might get a little bit overwhelmed, but then oftentimes there's a lot of crag dogs who that is what they love to do. They hang out on a rock and they wait for their owners to come down, they get all the lovings and then, you know, they carry on the way. So a lot of folks do bring um, animals to the crag. And then oftentimes there actually are some gyms that um, allow dogs in and not just um, supporting dogs, but sometimes people just bring their house dogs in because they're trying to train them to get used to being surrounding, surrounded by people and get them ready to go to the crack. Whoa, I love the idea of taking a cat climbing. I think my cat would love that. <laughs> um, okay, we have a lot of questions. So thank you all so much for submitting them. I'll ask one final question um, and then we will move on to the next part of our program. Um, what is your favorite climbing snack uh, or how do you stay um, nourished and hydrated during your climbs? <laughs> yes, I have two favorite climbing snacks. So my first favorite climbing snack is I love to eat peppers. Um, as an apple. I don't like to chop them up. They're really great because they are filled with water. So it's another way to get your hydration in um, during a, like a long day of climbing. And then my other favorite climbing snack is I really love gummy bears. <laughs> They're actually a source of good protein and like energy wise. And so I don't do like the active um, gummy bears. I love like Haribo gummy bears, like gummy bears you can find in the grocery store type. That sounds delicious. Peppers and honey 
I mean, peppers and gummy bears, everyone. Um, awesome. Um, thank you so much for joining us today and for teaching us like all of this amazing information about climbing. Um, and thank you to our friends who are who've been just so curious and sharing all of those great questions. Um, we hope you'll join us again um, another time. Um, let's give Brittany a big round of applause. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, we hope you have a great next climb. Um, I know you're going climbing this this weekend, maybe? I am. I'm going ice climbing upstate Ooh. New York. So <laughs> after this call, I'm going to awesome. drive up upstate. So that will be super fun. But yeah, thank you all so much for having me. This has been such a fun conversation. And I hope that I've gotten to inspire some really great folks to get into climbing or get a little bit more curious about climbing. Um, so yeah, thanks so much. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Awesome. Bye. Bye. All right, friends. So we are going to be getting started. Um, it's officially our art time. Um, today, our special guest talked about how she was able to climb big mountains and walls um, and accomplish her climbing goals with the help and support um, and encouragement from her team, um, from her friends, from her community. So I thought that we could do an art project today um, that brought some kindness and encouragement to either ourselves or someone we care about, or maybe even a stranger. Um, we are going to make some rock art. Um, you can write or draw any words or pictures that will cheer someone up or help them keep going when they face a challenge um, or just make them smile. But before we begin, let's make sure we have everything we need to make some encouraging rock art. <laughs> All right, so first, um, since I'm going to be doing some painting and drawing today, I have my um, art. Uh, I'm setting this up to, in case I get any paint or um, colors anywhere else besides my rock. Um, but then you're going to need some rocks. Um, and you'll want one that has like a smooth surface for making your art on. I pre-painted my rocks, but you don't need to do that. Um, you can always just paint directly on the plain side of a rock. Um, but I pre-painted mine with some colors so they were a little easier for me to work on today with you. Um, you are going to, if you, anyone is using markers or, um, yeah, markers instead of paints, that's awesome. You can do that as well. Um, and then, you're going to need some paint brushes if you are using paint and some paint if you're using paint. <laughs> so I am, I just used three colors today, purple and blue and orange. Let me see, make sure you can see those there. And then do I need anything else? Oh, my water cup um, so I can clean my brushes. I'll put that over here. Um, and then I think that's it. I've got my rocks, my colors. Let's get started. <laughs> so first, we have to think about something that we could say or write on our rocks that would be a positive message to someone. What kinds of things can we think of um, to say to someone to encourage them? Kind of like when maybe someone is climbing a wall and they need to get all the way up to the top or they're facing a different kind of challenge in their life. What are some things that we could tell them that could help them to keep going. There's a few different, I, I'm thinking, but if you think of anything, please feel free to put that in the chat and I will um, share them so that we can have some ideas to inspire our other friends that are here with us today. But some things I was thinking you could say is, you could say, you can do it. Feel like that might help them know that they can and they'll keep trying. You could tell them, I love you. You could let them know that they are very loved and that you want to see them succeed. And then today, I am planning on writing on my rock, you are strong. 
And I was thinking that I want to say you are strong because someone could be strong with their body kind of strong. They could be strong with their mind. They could be strong with their heart. They might just need a kind of encouragement that tells them they can do whatever they want to do, whatever the goals they want to meet. They know that they're strong enough in all parts of themselves. So I'm going to be writing, you are strong on my rock today. Remember that whatever you choose, you're going to want to sh choose like short words or short sentences because we can't fit very much on a rock. It's not a very big surface. You can always include an extra note um, or a card if you're giving this as a gift to someone for more encouragement. Um, but for today, you just want to choose maybe a short thing you can say to someone. Um, and then if you don't want to write something, you don't have to. You could also um, draw something or add some pictures or shapes um, that could make someone smile, that could make someone be feeling a little bit cheered up. Um, and your rocks might be something that you're giving to someone directly. It might be something that you kind of leave outside and whoever sees it, they might take it and it'll be a surprise gift to them, or they might um, just use that as a little bit of inspiration when they walk by. So, um, okay, if you're getting started, let's see, wait, oh, we have some people, some people shared some more ideas. Let's look at those first. Um, we have someone who said, you can do it, girl. I love that idea. <laughs> um, someone said, I am strong, you are strong. We have Black Girl Magic Rules. I like that one too. We have You Rock. That's the one. I also did a You Rock one. I kind of like the idea that it's a rock. And you're saying You Rock. Just, you're really cool. Um, keep sharing if you want. Um, all right. So today, I think that I'm going to write You Are Strong. Um, and I'm planning on using paint. But if you need to, you can use um, your markers and crowns and just write directly on your rock too. But for now, let's get started. And I'm going to write, hmm, I think that I'm going to use blue because that's like a strong color to use. And I'm going to write you. And I have to make sure I don't write too big because I want to make sure I fit it on my rock. And sometimes when we're writing things like this, you can always um, can always paint over it. If you make a mistake, we learned that it's okay to make mistakes today when it comes to rock climbing. So you can always paint over it, let it dry, start over again next time. Okay, so I wrote you. Uh, let's see, maybe I can fit R. Should I do R in the same color? Hmm. Today I brought three paint brushes, so I don't have to worry about rinsing them, but I can put it in my my blue, my blue one to make sure I clean off my brush. Remember, I always put it in there. I'm gonna say you are in my orange. You see that? Ooh. And as I'm writing my words, I'm thinking about what other details. I could add to my rock that'll make it really stand out. Hmm. You are. Let's see. Rinse my other brush. And my last brush I'm going to use for purple. Strong. You are strong. And S is a kind of a tricky letter. Let me make sure I try really hard on that one. Ooh, got to twist it around. There we go. I got my S. Okay, I'm going to try and, you know, one idea I think friends, obviously some friends might have already started and noticed this. Might Maybe next time I would use a pencil to write out what I'm gonna say first, just to make sure I fit everything and just to make sure I could erase it if I needed to. And then we could paint or write with marker on top of it. That's an idea I'm gonna remember for next time. <laughs> so 
something that um, Brittany was talking about was how she likes that rock climbing is something she can do by herself and with other people. And I like that because I think there's a lot of things like that in our lives that we can do, like making art. I'm technically here by myself and I like making my art by myself, but I also like getting to make it with you and making art with other people. It's kind of like a different experience. I get to do something I love with other people, but I also like really doing it by myself because I'm someone I love and I like doing things with myself. <laughs> you are strong. See, my mind was almost going to not fit, but I made it fit there. Um, okay, what could I add? Maybe I could do some polka dots now. I'm going to do some polka dots. And then what do you all think about some hearts? Because I was talking about our hearts can be strong. It takes a lot of strength sometimes to love people and to help people. And you need your heart to do that. Let's see. Whew. Okay. I did three hearts. And then how can I add some blue? Hmm. Maybe I'll do a smiley face because when I'm feeling strong, it makes me want to smile. Maybe I can fit that, but let me show you my hearts first. Trying not to get any paint on my hands, but it's okay if I do. Okay, there we go. Oh no. And just as I said that, I got some on my thumb. <laughs> okay. Oh no. My eyes of my things are getting a little drippy. A little drippy from the water. Sometimes you have to make sure when you tap your brush, you. You tap it like that to make any extra water come off. I forgot to do that. Okay. I added some smiles. Okay. The, like I said, the eyes are getting a little drippy. So, but <laughs> now I'm thinking when I'm done with my rock, I think I might go put it out in the courtyard of my apartment and so anyone who walks by could see it. And if they need some extra encouragement, they might even take it and put it in their house. Um, but I'd love to see the rock art you and your classmates or you and your family are making today and where you plan on putting it. Are you giving it as a gift? Are you gonna put it in the park? Um, let me know. You can feel free to um, share a picture with us on social media using the hashtag, hashtag Namak Kids. You can tag the National Museum of African American History and Culture, or you can just send me an email. I love getting some emails. Um, check out the info in the chat to do that. I'd also really love to hear how this program was. If you joined us for any of our other programs, um, please let us know how it was for you. We have a feedback form in the chat where you can share your feelings and your thoughts with us about um, the programs. And I can't wait to read some of those responses. Thank you all so much for learning with me and for celebrating Black History Month with me and the National Museum of African American History and Culture this month. Um, we love this month because so many people use this time to learn Black stories, to celebrate Black people, and to remember Black history. But you know what? We learn and celebrate Black history and culture all year long at our museum. So even though Black History Month is coming to an end, be sure to keep learning together, watch our previous program videos, visit our museum or your local African American History Museum or historic site, um, and check out our um, Namak events calendar for more programs throughout the rest of the year too. Until next time, friends, I hope you stay curious and remember to celebrate you too. Bye, everybody.